Hey guys, it's Carrie from Lovely Etc. And today I want to show you five different paint finishes you can use to really transform your DIY projects. I am a huge fan of shopping at yard sales and estate sales and thrift stores to find really unique home decor that not everybody else has and it's dirt cheap. The problem is a lot of times I see tons of potential in it, but it doesn't actually look cute yet. And paint is the easiest way to transform anything. It's cheap, it's easy, and it's actually really amazing what you can do with paint. So today I'm going to show you five different paint finishes on five different thrifted things that I've been hoarding and haven't had time to get to yet and I'm excited to get creative and make something beautiful today. So here's what I am working with. I have this vintage gold balance that not only is the finish peeling off but it also just looks super gaudy and so I have a different idea in mind for this. I have this black lantern type thing that you can put a candle in that I want to use on my porch and right now it is black and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this finish but it's super generic and I know I can do something better with this. I'm always finding these little wooden candlesticks at thrift stores and yard sales and they're fine. Every now and then I do use them as is but I know that I can make this way cuter. I have this cool vintage marquee letter. It's like an ampersand. It has a really dirty black plastic finish right now. And I have this wall organizer pocket. Um, I actually have several of these and again, it's fine. It's kind of cute, but I have a vintage metal look in mine that will really tie into the whole locker feel. So I'm excited to do this as well. So there are about a million and one really cool paint products out there that you can use to give your DIY projects really cool effects. But for this project, I'm challenging myself to only use paint. So no wax, no glaze, no special additives, none of that, just paint. Because even though there's a million fancy products out there, you really don't have to use them. Sometimes they make it a little bit easier, but paint is always simple, it's always cheap, and you can do pretty much anything you want with it. So let's see how it goes. First up, I'm working on this metal lantern, and I want to give it a really simple blue-green patina. I didn't have the exact color I needed in my paint stash, so I mixed together two shades of paint to make a nice lightish blue-green color. And I will list all of the exact paints and colors that I used in the video description, but you can definitely get the same color without using the exact same thing that I used. The main thing is to use either a matte acrylic craft paint, which are the really cheap little bottles of paint in the craft store, or a chalk paint so that you get a great matte finish. To apply the paint, I used a dry brush technique where you put just a small amount of paint on your paintbrush and then wipe most of it off. And then I stippled the paint on, so I kind of dabbed it on with my paintbrush. And then I followed that up with a clean paintbrush with no paint to help spread the paint around a bit more because I really wanted an uneven textural looking finish. The key to most authentic faux finishes is layering. So once my paint was dry, I came back and used the exact same color of paint, but this time I made a color wash with it. So I dipped my paintbrush into water, put it in the paint, back into the water so that my paintbrush was really wet, and then brushed it all over my piece, and then used a paper towel to blot off all of the excess water and excess paint. This just gives the whole thing a really layered look, because even though both layers of paint were the exact same color, the watered down paint is a lot less opaque. Just adding a bit of water to your paintbrush and then blotting with a paper towel seems like such a tiny thing, but it actually makes a huge difference in how your paint finish looks. I'm really happy with how this paint finish turned out. It was super simple with just two steps and one color paint, and it really gave this lantern some much needed character. Next up, these cute metal bins. I want to give these metal bins a vintage steel type paint finish. And the great thing about this finish is it can work on anything, even things that aren't actually made of metal. The first step is to paint the entire surface with a flat gray paint. Chalk paint works great for this and so do acrylic craft paints which generally also have a matte finish. Next you're going to add black paint and again you want something with a matte finish. And we're doing a wash again so get your paintbrush really wet, add some paint and then brush it on working in small areas. And as soon as you finish one area get a paper towel or an old rag and wipe off all the excess blending in the black with the gray paint that's already there. The final step is doing a wash with a wet paintbrush and silver paint. This step is very subtle and you may not be able to tell much of a difference in the video, but in person it makes a big difference because it adds just a subtle bit of shine that gives the look of actual metal. And here's my finished bin. I think that these bins look like they were definitely meant to have this brushed metal finish. 
Next up is this little wooden candlestick. Now, there was absolutely nothing wrong with the wood finish on this candlestick to begin with. It was just pretty blah. I started with dry brushing some white paint all over the candlestick. Remember, dry brushing is when you get a little bit of paint on your paintbrush bristles and then wipe most of it off before actually painting. Then after dry brushing, I used a paper towel to help blend in and wipe off any excess paint. For all of the dry brushing that I'm doing on these paint finishes, I'm using these little chip brushes. They're super cheap and the bristles are perfect for giving a lot of texture to your paint. The next step is dry brushing on some tan paint. I again didn't have the right color so I mixed together a kind of a grayish tan and a dark brown to make the shade that I wanted. Remember with dry brushing, you don't want to paint a solid, smooth coat of paint. The point is that you're leaving some areas unpainted so that the previous layers of paint can shine through. After you dry brush it on, you can use a clean paper towel just to kind of blend and smooth the paint. And that's it. Just two simple steps for a really nice weathered farmhouse style candlestick. This next one is my favorite of all five paint finishes. I started by painting the entire thing with a base coat of chalk paint. The chalk paint just acts as a primer so that the metallic paint can stick better to the metal. Once the chalk paint was dry, I used copper metallic paint to give everything a bright copper finish. For this piece, I really want to tone down the gaudy factor, so I am going for an aged copper finish with a lot of patina. And my bright copper was just a bit too bright so I mixed together some aged bronze paint with some brown paint and started dry brushing and using my paper towel as needed to help blend everything in. Time for the copper patina. I'm using the same two bluish green paint colors I used earlier but with a lot more of the darker color this time because I want to make a darker turquoise and I'm combining it with some brown paint to again help give more of that aged look. So I am dipping half of my brush in the blue paint and half in the brown paint and then blotting off most of the paint so I can do a nice dry brushed finish all over my piece. And again, I'm coming back to blot off and blend with a paper towel. You could also just mix some of the brown paint directly into your blue green paint, but I like keeping them separate this way and on separate parts of the brush because it just gives a lot more variation to your paint finish. And finally, I'm adding a second shade of the patina color. Again, I'm using the same two paint colors, but this time I added a lot more of the lighter shade so that my finished color is way lighter than the previous coat that I did. I'm dry brushing and blending again, but this time I'm leaving lots of open space for the previous colors to shine through and really just concentrating on accentuating the highlights. This finish ended up being pretty similar to the patina that I did on the lantern earlier, except that finish was a lot simpler with a lot fewer steps. And this finish was more complicated and took more time, but the finished product is way more detailed and richer. Originally, I was planning to have more of the copper color shining through, but this project kind of took on a mind of its own. Luckily, I love the way it turned out. And now for our fifth and final paint finish. I decided to give my vintage plastic ampersand an aged brass finish. The best thing to do would have been to start with a base coat of chalk paint or a primer like I did with my metal scale, but I didn't do that. I skipped right to the metallic paint. Luckily, it ended up adhering okay. I started by giving the whole thing a coat of paint in the color Vintage Brass. Once that dried, I started adding more layers of paint. First, I mixed together some aged bronze paint with some brown and dry brushed it all around the edges and blended it with a paper towel. Then I decided it really wasn't dark enough, so I dry brushed on a mix of dark brown and black paint all around the edges and blended it in. Really, this entire process was just about adding layers of paint, evaluating how it looked and to see what it needed next, and then adding that color next. As I was painting, I tried to concentrate a lot of the darker colors around the edges of the letter and a brighter, shinier finish towards the middle because that is how a lot of brass objects naturally age. And I think that really helped give it a more authentic look. I love how this one turned out. I think that the vintage brass finish is the perfect complement for this vintage ampersand. So there you have it, five different paint finishes that are perfect for transforming anything blah, boring, outdated, ugly, gaudy, any number of problems. These paint finishes will help transform your finds into something that you really love. And I'm really excited that I was able to create all five paint finishes using only paint and some paintbrushes, water, and paper towels. But 
No special waxes, no special additives, nothing fancy, not even any sandpaper, just paint. If you haven't, be sure to check out my video on how to create a weathered wood look using just paint. What I really love about that video is it shows you how to create the look of weathered wood on absolutely anything, even plastic. And I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, Lovely Etc., where I share lots of inexpensive DIY ideas for creating a home that you love.